I'm Brian Cushing, Program Director here at Locust Grove from the Hearth Kitchen, and joining me today is Andrea Merriweather, spirits historian, uh, veteran cocktail artisan, uh, <laughs> and we're going to be making and trying Mississippi Punch today from Jerry Thomas's 1862 uh, Cocktail Manual. Now, Punch earlier on, and still sometimes to this day, but less so, had been, you know, a big bowl full of, uh, of, a, of a spiritus concoction, but his life got faster as the 19th century wore on. People had less and less time for that, and so punch uh, became what we know of today's cocktail, basically its individual portion. Uh, and even though it's called Mississippi Punch, uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing today. And so the spirits that we're going to be working with are uh, Woodford Reserve, uh, bourbon, uh, the folks over at Woodford Reserve have been very good to Locust Grove, so I'm never hesitant to have them on our bar. Great stuff. Uh, Hoosier, uh, Old Clefty uh, Hoosier Apple Brandy from Spirits of French Lick. Uh, we heard from uh, Alan Bishop, who made this uh, the last time we were on, and Jamaica Rum. We're using Plantation Jamaica Rum, and Andrea has uh, some very specific insights into rum's place in the, uh, the spirit landscape in America, and she's going to share some of that with us today. Well, hello, friends at home. So excited to be here with you today. So I'm new to the Jamaican rum uh, enthusiasm because I, of course, am a bourbon enthusiast. But um, just to say, um, Jamaican rum is one of those, um, I call it a nuanced spirit. It has a very interesting aromatic bitter um, elements to it. You have that heavy sweet from the sugar cane. And if you are a bourbon drinker, this is like your first cousin. So I would say I'm very excited to be here at Locust Grove today for this cocktail experience. Um, and just looking forward to presenting a new perspective of American early farm distilling, um, more from the minority African American perspective. As we know, slaves greatly contributed to the production of some of these American and international products. So today I'm excited to be here with this cross-cultural punch, as we would call it, because you have America, you have France, you have Jamaica. So we're really excited to put this together and have a cross-cultural exchange. And just for anybody who might not know, explain to us a little bit about what rum is and the history of its production. Sure. So rum and its classification is a byproduct a spirit created from sugar cane. So what you do is after fermentation, you go into the distillation process using all those byproducts, which will be molasses and other pieces of that. So no rum is alike, and uh, it's really dependent on the climate and the soil um, for the sugar cane plant. So you have Brazilian cassasha, you have traditional Jamaican rum, you have gold, you have aged, you have white rum, so many variations of the spirit. And I would say with any spirit, if you're new to it, Try those different options. Um, don't limit yourself. Don't say, oh, well, I just want the darkest and the richest product. Um, we know right now in the spirits industry that Kasasha is actually very popular. We have people leaning to that, and it's a Brazilian product, huh. but Jamaican is traditional. Um, we know that a lot of slaves um, that were on plantations in the South, uh, we saw a lot of sugar cane exchange from that area. So we want to pay tribute to the people of Jamaica for creating a classic product. Absolutely. So we're going to move into actually making this cocktail uh, now. I get this from Jerry Thomas's 1862 Bartender's Guide. Uh, one of the first times, if not the first time, that a, that a bartender actually wrote down this trade. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to do uh, two of them here so we each have one. We've got about three quarters of a tablespoon of sugar. I'm going to go ahead and put that into our shaker, into that. We're going to put about an ounce, um, and if you're at home, uh, this is two tablespoons, um, a half an ounce of, of water. Uh, that's to get that dissolved. Uh, hopefully the water's not too cold. Uh, if you put, I mean, we are gonna shake this, but if you put sugar straight into your spirits, it's not gonna dissolve. Yes. So you wanna get that. Cheap trick for home, simple syrup. Right. <laughs> Okay, so get that nice and mixed up. You're so good at this, Brian. Well, thank you. I'm, I am an uh, enthusiastic amateur. I'm me. <laughs> I've already been chilling these glasses down with ice, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. There we go. 
Uh, and now, very easy in the proportions. Most of the, and our cork just broke, so. It happens. Yep. Happens with products all the time. Easy fix. Yep. So the uh, biggest portion of a spirit is going to be the brandy uh, at a full ounce. Again, this is Spirits of French Licks. Apple oh. brandy. Go, Alan Bishop. This is uh, the first, it used to be big before Prohibition, and now we're bringing it back. Okay, so there's our brandy. We're going to do half an ounce of bourbon. And it actually does say bourbon whiskey. They had applied the term bourbon to Kentucky whiskeys, but we did not have the, uh, we didn't have the act of Congress that codified what it is yet. That was 1961, remember? Don't quote me. <laughs> Don't quote me. And another half ounce of our Jamaica rum. And this has a very powerful flavor. And if you are in the rum curious, make sure that you check out Fred Minnick's book, Rum Curious. It's a definitely a recommended read for any new rum enthusiast. Only other real ingredient is we're going to do the juice of about an eighth of a lemon in each one. Now be very careful when you're juicing at home. Juice down, not up. Don't want to spray your face. Right. Be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Just get a little bit of lemon juice in there. And we are going to get a nice bit of ice in there. This is a this is a nice chill beverage. We're, we're, we're out here in January, but this would be very nice for us. I'm a porch setting in the middle of sunrise. With all your favorite brown spirits, don't let people tell you that it requires a specific time of the year to enjoy a brown spirit. You can enjoy it year round, you can enjoy it neat, you can enjoy it ice, however you like it. We're so just gonna give it a bell. Oh, you got a mean shake. Shake, 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 shake. And we're gonna pour the whole contents. I tried straining it because it wasn't really clear what Jerry Thomas had in mind, but ice was better. We're going to garnish with a uh, half a piece of orange. He also said berries in season, but it's January. So think about all those berries that you collected from over the summer that maybe you froze for jam or for other accoutrements. You can reuse them now for this wonderful winter cocktail. And this is our Mississippi punch. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank it you has been this. lovely. I want to salute everyone with a traditional Kentucky cheers of mine that I came up with. So, to eating our chicken fried, drinking our tea sweet, and always enjoying our bourbon neat. Excellent. Cheers, y'all. Enjoy. Mm. What do you think? This is delicious. I definitely say the rum stands out. Yeah. That's the three spirits. Mm. Yes. Like the citrus. It's not too sweet. It's funny. The rum isn't the biggest thing in there, but it does. Uh, it does actually really stand out. It's like cream rises to the top. Right. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to try it at home, uh, hope you hope you like it, and thank you for joining us uh, for another cocktail here in the Hearth Kitchen uh, with Andrea Merriweather, spirits historian, veteran uh, cocktail artisan, uh, and I'm Brian Cushing, and uh, we will see you next time. Enjoy.